Welcome to Maths with EJD. I've been making a series of videos on matrices. And in this video, I move on to talk about matrix multiplication. And under this, we'll be looking at the rule for multiplication, vector matrix multiplication, matrix matrix multiplication, and then we'll look at some properties of matrix multiplication. All right, let's go. Now, let's consider rule for matrix multiplication. There's only one rule for matrix multiplication. And the rule is this, that two matrices can only be multiplied. They can only be multiplied multiplied if the number of columns of the first of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second so if you have matrix a and you want to multiply it by b it means that the number of rows for a number of rows for matrix a should be equal to number of rows for matrix B. I mean, the number of columns, sorry, number of columns for matrix A should be equal to the number of rows for matrix B. Again, the number of columns for matrix A should be equal to the number of rows for matrix B. So once that is settled, uh, it doesn't matter what the other factors are as far as the number of columns for the first matrix is equal to the number of rows for the second matrix, then you can multiply those two matrices. All right. And once you do that, the product you are going to get is going to have a dimension in this order. The dimension of the product of two matrices is the number, is the number, the number of rows of the first by the number of columns of the second. For instance, if you multiply a two by three matrix, if you multiply a two by three matrix with a three by four matrix, you are going to end up getting a two by four matrix. And what happens is that the number of columns of the first is equal to the number of rows of the second. And you know, it looks like because of that commonality, the, those go out and then you end up having this two by four. So the product of a two by three matrix will be a three by four matrix. Then imagine that you multiply a one by five matrix with a five by six matrix. You end up getting a one by six matrix because, you know, this five rows in the first and five five columns in the first and five rows in the second, you know, it looks like they are taken out and then you have a one by six matrix resulting from their product. In the same way, if you multiply a three by one matrix by a one by three matrix, you end up getting a three by three matrix. Why? One column in the first, one row in the second, and then you're left with three by three. And that is how the rule for matrix multiplication goes and the results you get. Okay, having said that, let's take uh okay. Um the first thing we would the next thing we'll be considering would be the vector matrix multiplication as we saw previously vector matrix multiplication if you remember when we talked about types of matrices we looked we considered row matrix and column matrix and if you remember i told you that a row matrix or a column matrix is called uh, you know it's called a vector right so a vector is either a row matrix or a column matrix. So any matrix that has only one row or only one column is simply referred to as a vector. You know, that's under the general concept of linear algebra. So now, 
having known the rule that as far as the number of columns of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of the second matrix, you can multiply those two matrices. Then uh, that applies to the idea of row matrix and column matrix or vector and matrix, a vector matrix multiplication, right? For instance, you have a one by three matrix multiplied by a three by two matrix. Already you can see that the multiplication is possible because the number of columns in the first is equal to the number of rows in the second. Three columns in the first and three rows in the second. We don't care what the number of rows for the first is and what the number of columns for the second is. As far as the number of columns of the first is equal to the number of rows of the second, then we can multiply them. And to multiply them, um, I mean, at this point, I really have to appreciate uh, my secondary school teacher, Mr. Ben Amorua. He taught us this very easy way of multiplying matrices. Now, since you're multiplying a one by three matrix by a three by three matrix, you already know that the end, end result is going to be a one by two matrix, one row, two columns. That's what you're going to end up getting. And if since that is the case, you know that this A11 is going to multiply B11. A12 multiply B21, A13 multiply B31. And of course, that, that will give you the first row. I mean, the first, uh, yeah, the first row, first column. And then the second row, which, I mean, the second column, which you're going to get will now be A11 multiplying B12, A12 multiplying B22, A13 and B32. And for, for you to get that easily, what you just do is you write out this first column in the you write the first column in the second matrix. Um, let me try to highlight that so you can get the idea. Um, so this column multiplies this row, and that will give you the first column of the result. And then for the second column of the result, the same row, I mean, multiplies this. And those, uh, so it means you invert this row. You make you turn this row into a column over each of the columns. So you see, uh, so you write B11, B21, B31, and then B12, B22, B32. And then you invert the row of the first matrix over each of them. So you have A11, A12, A13. And then you also have A11, A12, and A13 inverted over B12, B22, B32. And the matrix that is going to result, you already know it's going to be a one by two matrix, one row, two columns. So the first column, like I told you, will be multiply A A11 by B11 plus A12 by B21 plus A13 by B31. And that is exactly what you have here. For the second column of that one by two matrix, you're also going to have A11 multiplied by B12 plus a12 multiplied by B22 plus A13 multiplied by B32. And that is exactly what you have here. Now, if you take it to, uh, if we consider a column matrix, you notice know, here we had a row matrix, which is a vector. And then here we are bringing up the idea of a vector matrix. I mean, uh, sorry, of a column matrix which is also seen as a vector, right? So here we have a three by one matrix to be multiplied by a one by three matrix. And like you already know, three by one multiplied by one by three, one by three. So, you know, if you take the one out in the center, it means you're going to end up getting a three by three matrix. So multiply three by one matrix, uh, by a one by three matrix, you get a three by three matrix. And then uh, in this case, since you already know you're expecting a three by three matrix. So this, what, this column here, which is just B11, you write it three times because you, you have uh, three elements to multiply it by. So you have B11 in three places. So you have B11, 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 B12, 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 B13, B13, B13. And then you, you, you put uh, for the first, column so a11 multiplies each of the elements so you have a11 since a11 is the first row here it multiplies each of this and then since a21 is in the second row then it multiplies everything 
in the second row here. So you have B1, 1, B1, 2, 2, B1, one And then uh, you also have B A3, 1 over the third row. So you have, of course, you already have B1, 1, B1, 2, B1, 3. So A3, 1 multiplies each of them. And then all you just need to do is multiply them. You know, so you have A1, 1, B1, 1. Uh, A1, 1, B1, 2. This would be this. And then B B one A one one B one three that's what you have here. Then A two one A two one B one one. So this is what you have here. A two one B one two. You have that. A two one B one three. You have that. A three one B one one. That's that. A three one B one two. That. A three one B one three that so in this case you know there's no need to sum up anything because uh you, you I, I think it helps to know the type of matrices you're multiplying and the kind of results you're expecting so that will help you in setting up um, how you do the multiplication now having taken care of this can we take an example um okay now look at this example it's actually a practical one and there are some vital lessons to learn from here okay um let me do this let me go red for now okay a company tracks the performance of two employees over a number of projects and customer satisfaction ratings so imagine a company um they have two employees and they are supposed to undertake a number of projects maybe in a quarter or in a year or whatever and then after they've delivered the project, the customers give their ratings, say, over five. So now the weights assigned to each performance index is given as the vector V, which is 0 .40, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, which is a column matrix. And of course, that's a vector, right? So of course, the performance indices are the number of projects em embarked upon and the customer satisfaction. So you see that um, zero though, uh, number of projects of course, a number of projects carries uh, a mark of 0 0.4, and but the rating carries 0 0.6. So it means it's not enough to deliver se uh, several projects. Uh, uh, you know, it's also important that the customers like what you have delivered, right? So um, apart from that, the two indices for the two employees are given in the mat matrix M. So this will be for employee one. This is for employee two, 32. Uh, so the, employee, the first employee uh, did 32 projects, and the customer rating was four. The second employee did 35, uh, oh, sorry, uh, this should be 33 projects. This is 33 projects. So now the question is, find the weighted performance for each employee. Find the weighted performance for each employee. So let's see. So of course, you have the weights here. You have the weights here. So... Now, V is 0 0.4, 0 0.6. So 0 0.4 is the project with that is the weight attached to the project, the number of projects done. Then 0 0.6 is the weight attached to the ratings by customers. So you see that seems to, uh, the rating by the customer seems to carry a heavy weight because it's not enough to do so many projects. It's also good for the company that the uh, customers are satisfied with the perform with the job done, right? And of course, talking about the performance indices now, that's what we have here. So you have first employee, 32 projects, second employee, 33 projects. But the first employee got four as rating. Like you can see that has some kind of average rating over the 32 projects. And the second uh, employee got an average of three uh, rating over the 33 projects, right? So maybe it's pr probably want to use this to determine um, you know, the, some kind of reward for the customers. So want to know the best part. Maybe we have a best... Uh, performing employee for the year or something like that. So we can actually use this. Now look at this first of all, that is uh, vector is actually a two by one matrix, right? It has two rows and one column. And then the perform the matrix of the performance in this is actually a two by two matrix. So now you can already see that it won't be possible to do a two by one matrix to multiply a two by one matrix by a two by two matrix, it won't work because uh, the number of column here is one and the number of row here is two. 
So you cannot do this. But rather, if you switch it over, you get you have a two by two matrix multiplied by a two by one matrix. In that case, the number of columns here is two and the number of rows here is two. So that way you can actually do the multiplication and then you are going to end up having a two by one matrix, a matrix with two rows and one column. So that's part of the fact that V is given first. That does not mean that that is what you have to use, okay? So now, finally, we can talk about the weighted performance being M multiplied by V, having established that we can only multiply two by two by two by one. So you have this two by two matrix multiplied by this two by one matrix. And of course, the final result is going to be a two by one matrix. Now, how does that happen? Like I've told you already, you have just one column here, right? But then you have two rows. So it means you have to write 0 0.4, 0 0.6 in two separate rows because you have 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.6 because you have two rows here. Then you invert each row over those values. So you have 32, 4, for, you know, 0 0.4, 32, 0 0.6, 4. Of course, that makes sense, right? Because 0 0.4 is the weight attached to the number of projects. So 0 0.4 goes with the number of project 32. 0 0.6 goes with the rating 4. Same, 0 0.4 goes with 33 project by the second employee. And 0 0.6 goes with the three overall rating the employee got, right? And then if you multiply 0 0.4 and 32, you get 12.8. Then you add that to 0 0.6 and multiply by 4. That's 2.4. Then for the second employee, you have 0 0.4 times 33, that's 13.2. 0 0.6 times 3, that's 1.8. If you sum that up, you see that the employee, the first employee gets a rating of 15.2, and the second employee goes, gets a rating of 15.0. That's a very close uh, range. So now you see that employee 2 performed better with less number of projects due to the importance of ratings. So of, the first employee actually did 32 projects, but... If that first employee got a, an average rating of four. The second employee did more projects, that's 33, but got a rating of three. And because of the weights attached, you discover that the second employee, the first employee actually, uh, with uh, one, one uh, project less, actually got a higher rating. So that's a very good example of a vector matrix multiplication. I hope you followed that. Uh, of course, don't forget, you can always go back to be to make sure you really understand these concepts. Okay, so that takes us to the place of matrix matrix multiplication. Matrix matrix multiplication. The the idea is basically the same. Um, even here, you you can only multiply two matrices where the first one has where the number of rows of the the number of columns of the first one is equal to the number of rows of the second. So, like you see here. We have three minus one, two minus three, zero, four. So that's two rows and three columns multiplied by one, four, two minus five, six, seven. That's three rows and two columns. That's possible because the number of rows here is three. I'm sorry, the number of columns here is three and the number of rows here is three also. So if you take that out, then you, end, you know you are going to get a two by two matrix at the end of the day. And just like I told you, since the first one has two rows, it means you're going to write one, two, six in two places. So you have one, two, six, one, two, six. And then you're also going to write four minus five, seven in two places. Four minus five, seven, four minus five, seven. And then you invert three minus one, two over the first, over the uh, ones in the first row. And then you have invert minus three, zero, four over the ones in the second row. So that at the end of the day, you have one times three is three. Two times minus one is minus two. Six times two is 12. You know, that's the first uh, element. One, that's element one, one. Then four times three, 12. Minus five times minus one. You have to be careful with the signs here. Minus five times minus one, that's plus five. Seven times two is 14, right? And then you have one times minus three, that's minus three. Two times zero is zero. Six times four is 24. So that gives you the element two, one in that result. And then four times minus three, that's minus 12. Minus five times zero is zero. Seven times four is 28. And then you end up having this. Um, of course, after now, I may not have to go through all these steps. I will just uh, multiply and sum up straight. Uh, but it's very good that you understand what is really happening. That's why I had to do this. So if you add up all this, three minus two is one plus 12, that's 13 that you have here. 
12 plus 5 is 17 plus 14, that's 31. Minus 3 plus 0 is minus 3 plus 24, that's 21. Minus 12 plus 0 is 0 plus 28, that's tw plus 28, that's 16. So that's why, uh, so the product of these two will give you this. Okay, um, so we go to uh, the next example. We are multiplying a three by three mat matrix with another three by three matrix. So, you know, uh, of course, because there, if you look at the first matrix, you see that it has three rules. So because it has three rules, it means that whatever you have, it has to be, has to be written three times each. So it means, uh, you know, this is how it's, if you uh, see, this is how, it's been working. Um, this this is how it's been working. So you have two, one, two. We'll go with this, and then it also go with four, two, two, and, and so on. And but the easy way to go is just try this. Having known that there are three rows in the first one, then you write two, one, two, three times. Two, one, two, two, one, two, two, one, two, zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. Uh, then three, one, two. 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Now, having done that, then you now invert this first row of the first matrix. You invert it over all the sets in the first, over all the first row. So you have 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1. Then same, 4, 2, 2, 4, 2, 2, 4, 2, 2. And lastly, 3 minus 1, 1, minus 1, 3 minus 1, minus 1, 3 minus 1, minus 1. Now, I am jumping the step of, you know, doing it one by one. Now, I'm just saying, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 2, that's 4 plus 2, and that is why you have 6 here. 0 times 1 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 plus 1 is 1. So 2 plus 1, that gives you 3. Then 3 times 1, 3. 1 times 2, 2. 2 times 1, 2. So that's 3 plus 2 plus 2, and you get 7. Then uh, for the element 2, 1, you know, uh, you have 8, 2, that's 10, plus 4. Uh, no, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. And 10 plus 4 is 14. Okay, so that should be 14, actually, not 16. That is 14, not 16. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 8 is 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. Yeah, it's 14, not 16. Um, that was my mistake. Then 0 times 4 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. So 2 plus 2, you get 4 here. Then 12 plus 2, that's 14. 14 plus 4, that's 18. Now you see, uh, generally matrices can be quite simple, but because you have to deal with so, so many numbers, you need to be very patient because uh, you're prone to making mistakes. So you need to really be calm when you're doing this. Of course, in an exam situation, you need to be calm and fast. So you have to find a, a balance, right? And for, of course, for the last row, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 1 is 5. 5 minus 2 is 3. 0 times 3, 0. 1 minus 1, minus 1. 1 minus 1, minus 1. So minus 1 times minus 1 is, I mean, minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. Then 3 times 3, 9. 9 minus 1. That's 8. 8 minus 2, that gives you 6. So I know this can be really tricky, but of course, you can go over the explanation again so you can get it. I think the deal is once you can know the number of rows of the first column, and then you know the number of times to write each of the columns in the second row, and then you invert each of those rows in the first column on the, uh, each of the, each of the uh, uh, elements in the, in the, rows of the first matrix on the columns of the second one, then you can easily uh, find your way. Okay, so that leads us to the last slide for this video, where we talk about matrix multiplication properties. You know, there are some properties in mathematics generally, you know, we talk about commutativity, associativity, and distributivity. Maybe one of these days I'll, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, operations like that uh op yeah operations so now let's look for matrix multiplication right we we'll, let's consider commutativity commutativity is the idea that whether you do if you multiply a b and 
is it the same as when you multiply B, B, A? That's the idea of commutativity. So if A, B is equal to B, A, then you can say that matrix multiplication is commutative. For instance, in normal, when you add normal numbers, like 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 2 is also 5. So in that case, the normal addition is commutative, right? Uh, same thing, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 2 is 6. So when you do that with normal numbers, you get the same result. So you can say that multiplication is also commutative. But when you talk about matrix multiplication, uh, it is not commutative. So matrix multiplication is not commutative. That is, A, B is not equal to B. So I gave the example here. So if I have matrix A, 2, 1, 3, 2, B, 3, 1, 4, 2, and C, minus 2, 0, 3, minus 1. So I went to do, I, I did A, B first. So from here to here is A, B, all right? Um, okay. So, and from here to here is B, A. Again, you have 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 4, 2. And since you already see that there are two rows in the first matrix, so it means you're going to write each of the columns here, each of the elements in this column, you're going to repeat, write them twice. So you have, that's why you have 3, 4, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 1, 2. Then you invert the rows of the first matrix over them. So that's why you have 2, 1, 2, 1 over this, and then the second row, 3, 2, 3, 2. And then you have 3 times 2, 6, plus 4 times 1, 4. And that's why this is 10. 1 times 2, 2. 2 times 1, 2, plus 2. That's 4. 3 times 3, 9. 4 times 2, 8. If you add the 2, you get 17. 1 times 3, 3. 2 times 2, 4. 3 plus 4 gives you 7. So you see that AB gives you 10 for 17, 7. But then let's check BA. See that for BA, now B comes first. So you have 3, 1, 4, 2, 2, 1, 3, 2. Again, you have, um, you know, two rows in the first column. Now, the, fir uh, the first matrix is B now. So you have two rows there. So it means you are going to write each of these columns in the second matrix. You are going to write them twice each. So you have 2, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2. And then you put the rows here over them, 3, 1. That's why you have 3, 1 here, 3, 1. Then 4, 2, you put it over the second row, 4, 2, 4, 2. And then 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 1 is 3. 6 plus 3, that's 9. 1 times 3, 3. 2 times 1, 2. 3 plus 2, you have 5. Then 2 times 4 is 8. 3 times 2 is 6. Add them, you get 14. 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 2 is also 4. Add them together, you get 8. So you can see that um, AB is not equal to BA. And that is why we say that matrix multiplication is not commutative it's not commutative but uh, um as opposed to commutativity right matrix multiplication is associative associative means that if you multiply a b first before multiplying by c you are going to get the same thing if you multiply b c first before multiplying uh before before multiplying it by a so i'm going to leave that for you i start you i, I like you to establish this for matrices a b c above so this matrix is a b c i gave so try to so for for associativity, right? Multiply A B first. I think I already have A B here, so you can you can use that, you know. So multiply A B first, and then what? Then you now go ahead to you know A B the A B I got was uh, ten, four, seventeen, seven. So now multiply that by minus two zero, three minus one. So try that, and then go ahead and multiply B C first, and then then put A first and multiply it and see you discover that they are actually the same. So let that be your assignment. Then, of course, uh, let's talk about distributivity. Distributivity means that, uh, when we talk about distributivity, right, it is one operation distributing over another one. So, and we and it is established that matrix, multipli matrix multiplication, right, is distributive over addition. That is, if you add the two matrices first and multiply by A, it is the same thing as saying A times B, plus A times C, like this. Or if you if you add B plus C first, and you multiply by A, then it is the same as saying B times A plus C times A. That is the idea of distributivity. So you are going to establish uh, three things now, this commutativity, and then this distributivity, these two. And you can, of course, make up more for yourself. You can, for example, do something like, a plus B multiplied by C. And you want to check if that is the same as AC 
plus BC, you know? So try your hands on these things. And um, the next video is coming your way pretty soon. Uh, enjoy. So if you have any ideas for me, if there's something I should do better so you can get it more, uh, get things more clearly, or you have some questions you'd like me to take along the line, I, uh, maybe I can create a video where I compile your questions and you know, just attend to them. Thanks for listening. See you in the next video.